Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. I came across a new quote that I've placed on my quotes, common misconceptions spreadsheet. It's under the topic signs. The misconception is the signs of the times will be very obvious. And it's by Legrand Richards. At the time, he was presiding bishop of the church. And this is the April 1951 General Conference, a talk called Signs of the Times. Quote, I thought of the words of the Savior. On one occasion, the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to him and tempting him, asked him to show them a sign from heaven. And Jesus answering said unto them, when it is evening, ye say, it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, can ye discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the times. Let me pause right there really quick. You guys, we can fall into this trap where we think that we're so smart, whether it's at school, work, um, sports, whatever, you know, we're so smart. Maybe we're really good at church history. Uh, maybe we're even a scriptorian. We have all these scriptures memorized. Whatever the case, you know, wrapped up in your own uh, your own intellect and uh, your knowledge. But even with all that, you're not sensitive to the Spirit. And when, it, and when things happen, whether they're signs of the times or even signs in your own personal life guiding you a certain way, you can't tell because you haven't exercised your spiritual muscles. You live in like a material world and you're blind to that which is spiritual. And that was the problem with the Jews. They were wanting big, spectacular things. Um, they, they thought that they really, really understood the scriptures instead of just listening to the plain words of the prophets. Okay. And we know from the Book of Mormon that back then, they did have an understanding of what Messiah was going to be. We know that the Bible is not complete. There are books that are missing. Uh, probably there were books that were destroyed. There's things that were mistranslated. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot that was taken out of the scriptures, as we know. And it's because, you know, they don't want plainness. It's boring, you know. They want big, incredible, uh, miraculous things. And they want to lean to their own understanding. And so when Christ came, they didn't recognize him because they were expecting fanciful and exaggerated things. And they still do to this day. And there's this same attitude within our own church when it comes to the second coming. All right, continuing. If the world could discern the signs of the times, it would not be difficult for them to understand that the God of Israel has set his hand to do a marvelous work and a wonder among his people in the earth, in that there is a kingdom established that is ultimately destined to fill the whole earth. And it will do it because it is God's work and not the work of man. While I was president of the Southern States Mission, uh, one, of my, one of our missionaries wrote in from Florida and said, President, president Richards, I've been reading about the signs of the coming of the Lord, he said, when the sun darkens and the moon ceases to give its light and the stars fall from heaven, everybody will know that he is coming. Take note of this phrase right here. Everybody will know. You know, it's, it's kind of like this attitude that, you know, now there's not going to be any more need for faith. Um, it's just going to be in your face and we're going to prove you. It's, it's going to prove that you were wrong. You know, all you atheists, agnostics, uh, whatever. Now you're going to have, you're going to be forced to believe these things because now it's happening. All right. Well, continuing, this is what Legrand Richards says. And I wrote back and said, probably they will know the newspapers might announce some great phenomenon in the heavens, misplace, misplacement of planets that have caused this consternation and scientists will have their explanation to make of it. And unless they have faith in the living God, unless, as Jesus said, they can read the signs of the times, they may not know anything about what is going on in the world. I'm going to pause right here. This happens all the time, and sadly, it happens among members of the church that just don't have eyes to see, don't have ears to hear. 
you know, they're, they're expecting big, incredible things. And, and I, I tend to think that even if those things did happen, those big, miraculous, magical, spectacular things that they expect to happen that are just so cinematic in nature, I tend to think that even if they did happen, they wouldn't accept it. It's just, it's this thing, this like stubbornness of maybe not wanting things to change, you know, um, you don't want these things to happen. You want to pretend like it's not happening. Like everything's just going to go on like normal. You know, you can just keep living your life. Nothing's going to be interrupted. You know, there's a lot of different reasons why people want to put off the second coming, but I think that's one of them is people just don't want their lives to be interrupted. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Continuing why I said, if the inhabitants of this earth had the ability and the power to read the signs of the times, they would know that already the Lord has given far more than the darkening of the sun or obscuring the light of the moon or causing the stars to fall from heaven. For what he has accomplished in the establishment of, the, of his kingdom in the earth in these latter days and the unseen power operating in the world for the accomplishment of his purposes are greater signs than any of these phenomena that we read about the signs of his coming. And uh, that reminds me a lot of, if we come over here to my spreadsheet called Quotes, Ten Lost Tribes, I've heard time and time and time again that we have not seen anything as miraculous as the parting of the Red Sea. You, you remember this scripture right here, Jeremiah 16, uh, verses 14 through 16? Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, The Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he hath driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I, that I gave unto their fathers. Uh, Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after I have sent for many hunters, and they shall hunt them, from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. So people will say that, no, we haven't seen anything as incredible as the parting of the Red Sea. Uh, well, let's read what Jeffrey R. Holland said. At the time, in the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, uh, not president of, acting president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, this is from the April 2001 General Conference. The name of the talk is Witnesses Unto Me. I testify that the worth of souls is great in the sight of God, and that saving those souls through the redeeming atonement of his beloved Son is at the, is at the very heart of his work and his glory. In pursuing that work, I testify with Jeremiah that this last great missionary declaration, okay, missionary declaration, because again, people are expecting big, incredible things, a hidden body of the Ten Lost Tribes coming in spaceships or from out of hollow earth or coming from out of hollow earth in spaceships, right? And that's what's going to be more incredible than the parting of the Red Sea. Uh, that's the, the train of thought. Well, uh, Elder Holland is saying missionary declaration to modern Israel will, in the end, be a greater miracle than ancient Israel's crossing of the Red Sea. And then he cites the scriptures that we just read, Jeremiah 16, 14 through 16. Uh, there's also these two instances a little bit more recently. This is on YouTube, a video called Philippines Area, Area Wide Broadcast, Becoming a Temple Ready People. Uh, go to the 31 minute and 21 second mark of that. This is Elder Bednar in the Philippines. And he says, so think of Gordon B. Hinckley in the early 1960s coming here and leaving six North American missionaries, and that was it. And look at here, and all throughout the Philippines today. This is a miracle greater than the parting of the Red Sea, and it will continue because of the devotion, the consecration, the faithfulness of the members. And then he said something similar, but this time in Mexico. Uh, this is an excerpt from an article called Mexico Has Been Richly Blessed, uh, by Ryan Jensen, and it's in the Church News, November 2023. Elder Bernard gave us a broader vision, Cortez said after the event. 
like he said, many of us would would have loved to see the Red Sea open, but the miracle that we are seeing happening right now is perhaps even greater than that. So we have at least three times when you have apostles saying that missionary work and the growth of the church is more incredible than the parting of the Red Sea, where people where others look to this and they're like, no, it has to be something like that. It has to be a supernatural happening. It has to be magic. It has to be um, pleasing to the senses, you know, something that really wows you in the moment, like a movie. No, no. I, I mean, that can happen, but no, not here. These are miracles that are greater than the parting of the Red Sea. Um, another one from the verses that we just read, I've heard this said before. Uh, where it's like, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they sh- and they shall fish them. And after, I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them. I've heard it said before that, okay, so the missionaries right now, those are the fishers. But then when we have the 144,000, when the 10 lost tribes come from outer space and spaceships, and 12,000 are chosen from each tribe, and that's going to be the 144,000, they're going to be super missionaries and they're going to be the hunters. They're the ones that are going to go while we're all hunkering down in um, Jackson County, Missouri, inside the city walls of new Jerusalem. They're going to be the ones that are going to be safe enough to go out among like the hordes of, um, you know, scavengers and uh, marauders and stuff like that. And they'll be able to go to these places where missionary work, they're going to be the ones that can do missionary work and not be affected by the civil wars and plagues and stuff like that, right? That's very exciting and very spectacular, right? Well, uh, it turns out that instead of leaning to our own private interpretation, this has already been interpreted by the general authorities of the church. And this is what they say about this scripture. Uh, This is on the same spreadsheet, quotes, 10 Lost Tribes. And it's actually by LeGrand Richards. um, But at this point, he is of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. Um, Let's go with this one. This is the October 1981 General Conference in a talk called Be Ye Prepared. He says, You remember the words of the prophet Jeremiah. He said the day would come when it should no longer be said, the Lord liveth that brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth that brought up, brought up the children of Israel from all the lands whither he hath driven them, and that he would send for many fishers, and they would fish them, and for many hunters, and they should hunt, and they would hunt them from the hills and from the mountains and from the holes in the rocks. That's the 30,000 missionaries scattered throughout the world gathering in scattered Israel. It's not the 144,000. It's not the 10 lost tribes from outer space going on super missions. It's the missionary work that's taking place right now. And back in 1981, and he said this a few other times, going back, I think, to 1971. He talks about it here. Um, He repeats it a few times. And uh, by the way, when it comes to the 144,000, this is one of those topics that people really like to to just run wild with. When uh, we already have this interpreted, it's already been talked about by people in authority, by general authorities. I'm not going to go over all that right now. I have a playlist for that. So go to my playlist, okay? Go to my channel homepage, go to playlists, and I have a playlist called 144,000. Joseph Smith talked about the 144,000, how during his life, while he was still alive, they were being selected, and how ultimately they're exalted beings. Like when it's all said and done at at the time of the second coming, they're exalted beings. They're not mortals anymore. I'm not going to go over all that right here. Go to my playlist called 144,000, okay? Uh, If you've already watched it, maybe watch it again, refresh your memory, or you can check out my other spreadsheets that dispel a lot of these misconceptions, misconceptions about the Antichrist, um, Adam and Ayaman, the New Jerusalem, um, this idea that there's watchers that are going to return, and the Nephilim, and what our church actually believes about the scriptures associated with that. Guys, there aren't watchers that are returning. That's not our doctrine. Watch my, watch my playlist. So anyway, going back to this 
original um, quote on the quotes, common misconceptions, the Lord works through natural ways. And there are going to be some spectacular things that happen. There already have been spectacular things that have happened. We've had two world wars. We've had crazy cinematic tsunamis like the one in Japan in 2011 and earthquakes and all sorts of things going on, wonders in the sky and in the heaven. But people will not accept those because they're just like they have these unreasonable expectations for what things are supposed to look like. And they ignore them. They just ignore them. This They'll say, this is, you haven't seen anything yet. Just wait. No, this is it. This is it. Listen to the words of the prophets. Listen to when they say that signs of the times are taking place. And they say it pretty frequently. Stop leaning to your own understanding and your own uh, preconceptions of how things are supposed to be. Tune in to the words of the prophets and what they say and how they interpret scripture. I have other quotes here uh, talking about how the signs of the times, um, they come through natural means. have a couple through from uh, George Q. Cannon, Joseph Fielding Smith, Hubie Brown. And over the course of time, I'll collect more. So you can always come here anytime. Uh, the link for my spreadsheets is in the description box of each video. I say again, the link for my spreadsheets is in the description box of each video. You can come here. Look through these. The ones that we're looking at in this video are quotes, common misconceptions, and then quotes, 10 lost tribes. And you can easily navigate this by going to the bottom left, click on these three uh, bars right here. And then um, there's this uh, pop-up thing that you can scroll through. You can scroll through and go to whatever spreadsheet you want to look at. Uh, right now, there's four people looking at my spreadsheets as I'm making this video. Okay, that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.